When you think of a school, you might imagine something that looks like this. But many students actually spend a lot of time in buildings that look like this. This and this. Portables are definitely a problem. I've been in portables for around seven years. These prefab structures are the go-to quick fix when school populations surpass a school's capacity. Compared to permanent school buildings, portables are about a third of the cost to construct. And they only take a few days to install, compared to the many months it takes to build brick and mortar schools. But more than a few children we found are sick of studying in portables. It feels like you've got your priorities out of order, and I feel a little bit ignored. Portables are supposed to be temporary, something to help schools deal with overcrowding until student numbers drop or well, new schools here, can be built. Try telling that to Billy Lane. Pass this forward. She's been teaching in this portable at Callis Junior High in Puyallup, Washington, for 16 years. The one advantage of a portable is the walls are like, it's like one big bulletin board. You can put it up anywhere and leave it, so the kids have left their mark. Her students call it Lane's World. This one's going on the wall. They say a dynamic teacher helps make up for the shortcomings of portable life. But Lane admits not all portable classrooms are as cozy as hers. In some of the other portables that I've been in, smell has been an issue. You walk in and they have a real bad order in them. The lighting is really bad. It's dark. It's dank. When it's that kind of an atmosphere, it sets a tone. And it turns out, portables actually can be harmful to student health. Dave Blake is an indoor air quality specialist for the Northwest Clean Air Agency. He's tested air quality in more than 3,000 classrooms in Washington state. We have a lot of fancy equipment, but you don't really necessarily need it. You can walk into a classroom and right away, if you can smell the humanity and taste the humidity, you know you've got a ventilation issue. Blake measures carbon dioxide levels first. About 1,400 come in. Fresh outside air is about 400 parts per million now worldwide. We like to keep classrooms below about 800 or 1,000 parts per million. So if it's above that, uh, we want to know why. High CO2 indicates that students are breathing too much of their own exhaust, taking in germs from coughs and sneezes that hang in the air. Other airborne particles are likely building up as well, things like dust and allergens or volatile organic compounds like formaldehyde. The Tacoma Pierce County Health Department is one of the few Washington state agencies with consistent CO2 data for schools. They found that on average, portable classrooms did not meet the federal standard for acceptable CO2 levels in spaces used for human occupancy. CO2 is dropping in here with the kids gone. Other studies show that as CO2 levels rise, student performance falls. As CO2 goes up, so does absenteeism. And, and it, it's notable that it's a little worse in portables, uh, but we don't know why. Blake also looks for signs of but, moisture uh, by yeah. using infrared cameras and moisture meters. 8%. It's essentially bone dry. When a building takes on water, there's likely to be mold, a common trigger for asthma. Problems get worse as portables age, yet schools often use them well beyond their life expectancy. Critics say portables should be reinvented, they should be made from formaldehyde-free, non-toxic materials. They should have open ceilings, larger windows, skylights, and solar panels to generate electricity. Instead of noisy HVAC units, they should have natural ventilation systems that exchange more fresh air. But a portable like this is out of reach for most schools. Rudy Files is the chief operations officer for the Puyallup School District. 20% of their classrooms are portable. That's four times the national average. Portables are uh, considerably less expensive than permanent space. But those savings are only short term. Studies show that over the course of their lifetimes, portables actually cost twice as much as typical permanent classrooms. In addition to higher maintenance costs, portables are also highly inefficient and take more energy to heat and cool. And because portables are independent structures, they're often charged residential electricity rates. It's kind of a double whammy. Not only do you use more power, but you pay a higher rate for the power you're using. Portable classrooms aren't going away anytime soon, but there might be a solution on the horizon. One of the greenest portables is being installed in a Seattle elementary school. In this time-lapse video, we're seeing the first portable classroom built to meet the living building standards, the world's strictest rules in sustainable building. 
what we're trying to do is take something that was previously the weakest aspect of the school and turn it into a true asset. This classroom is designed to generate its own energy and harvest its own water. Inside, the classroom looks fundamentally different. Do you guys want to start with a little bit of show and tell? Rick Cochran helped design this classroom. Okay. Today, he's showing it to some fifth graders for the first time. You will see that all of this is exposed, and we do that because we want to show how the structure is made. And what's that white thing up there? That white thing is a carbon dioxide monitor, so we make sure that the air quality is good. And it has little gauges, knobs, and tubes everywhere that they're just really cool to look at. You never find a building that had that all covered up because it looks ugly. We wanted to play with the center beam, which is structural here. And again, that's also sustainably harvested wood. When they see systems like are in this building, that'll encourage them to ask questions. And, and for many students, that'll encourage them to just poke around. We're trying to expose things to make every single part of the building a learning opportunity. Right now, the price tag is about $200,000. That's more than twice the cost of a conventional portable. Over time, they say lower operations and maintenance costs will more than make up the difference. For the kids who will get to use this space, the difference is priceless.